Hey day students, uh, welcome to part 6 of the New York Regents High School exam for Integrated Algebra. This is the 2012, um, August 2012 um, release questions. We're going to be going over part 1 of the pre-response section, which are questions 31 to 33. Alright, let's go ahead and take a look at question uh, 31. It says, state the value of the expression 4.1 times 10 squared times 2.4 times 10 to the third over 1.5 times 10 to the seventh power. All right, so I'm going to do this problem uh, in two different ways. Remember, you can, you can use a calculator for this question, but uh, in order to ensure you get full credit, you have to show work, okay? So in the first method, I'm going to uh, convert this scientific notation, this number is in scientific notation into standard notation, okay? So method one, uh, 4.1 times 10 to the second power, what is that going to become? So let's write it down, 4.1 times 10 to the second power. Now, uh, in order to get rid of this 10 to the second power, I need to get rid of this this, this uh, power right here. I need to make it to the power zero, okay? So what I have to do is I need to subtract, I need to divide this by 10 squared or subtract two from this power, okay? So dividing by 10 squared or 100 or subtracting 2 from the power basically means that you're going to move your decimal point for the 4.1 two places to the back. Okay, you're going to move it two places to the back. All right, so let me illustrate that for you. So since we are subtracting 4.2 uh, from the power, we had 4.1. We're going to move the decimal point two places to the back, 1, 2. This is the same thing as dividing by uh, 100, okay? So uh, we're going to have to insert a zero here. So 4.1 times 10 squared is the same thing as 4.10 in standard notation. All right, so remember, uh, this is the front. When you go in that direction, you add and then write it again. So this is the front. Anytime your decimal point is going in that direction, you add to the power. And this is going to the back of the number. And anytime you're going in that direction, you're going to subtract. Okay, so front, add backwards subtract and you have your decimal point and you just move it a certain number of times okay so in this case we had to go back we have to back it up uh, so we subtract because we want to subtract 2 from this power and we have 410 okay now let's apply the same principle to uh, 2.4 times 10 to the third I need this uh, 10 to the third or, or 1000 gone so what I want to do is I need to divide by both sides by 1000 or basically subtract 3 from this power, okay? Subtracting 3 from the power is the same thing as dividing by 10 to the third or 1,000. So what does that, how does that affect 2.4? It affects 2.4 by moving the decimal point. Remember back, if you're going behind a number, it's negative. So you're going to back this up 1, 2, 3 times, okay? And there goes the new position on my decimal point. And then you're going to put in two zeros here, okay? So 2.4 times 10 to the third is the same thing as 2,400. All right. Now let's apply the same idea to the denominator, which is 1.5 times 10 to the seventh power. All right. I want to write this in standard notation, so I need this 10 to the seventh gone. So I need to divide by 10 to the seventh, which is uh, 10 million, or I could just subtract seven from this power. Okay. So if I subtract 7 from that power, how does that affect 1.5? If I subtract 7 from that power, the decimal point needs to go back how many times? Remember going, if you, we subtract a 7 here, so we have to go back 7 times. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Decimal point, and then we put in zeros in these places. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, so we divided this by uh, 10 million. So we need to multiply this by 10 million to compensate for that division that we did to that, to this piece, okay? All right, so uh, so 1.5 times 10 to the seventh is the same thing as one, five, with six, uh, six zeros, one, two, three, four, five, six, all right? So now what we're going to do is we're gonna put it all together. We have 410 multiplied by 2,400 divided by uh, 15, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 15 million, okay? All right, now we're going to plug this into our calculator, and then we'll convert the resulting answer into 
scientific notation, all right? Um, because the question asks us to express the answer in scientific notation. All right, so let's do it. So we're going to have 410 times 2400. Let's put that in parentheses. Whenever I'm dividing, I like to encapsulate my numerator in parentheses so I don't have any grouping errors. Divided by 1500000. Okay, six zeros. Enter, you have 0 0.0656. Okay, 0 0.0656 is the answer. So that equals 0 0.0656. Now I need to express this in scientific notation. So scientific notation requires there to be only one digit in front of the decimal place, okay? So in order to accomplish that, I have to move this decimal point back two places, okay? So remember, if you're moving it back twice, that's like a minus two for the exponent. Remember, I, we talked about it earlier that when you're moving your decimal points backwards, it's negative. If you're moving it forward, it's positive, okay? So if I move it back twice, I need to times this by 10 to the negative 2 power, okay, to compensate for that division or moving my decimal point back. So this point zero six five six is equal to 6.56. This is a number that has been divided by uh, 100 or 10 to the negative 2, so I need to compensate for that division by adding 10 to the, by multiplying by 10 to the negative 2, okay? So uh, there you have it. Okay, so this is the answer. Uh, let me show you another way of doing this. Method two. Method two. All right, so what I'm going to do in this method is what I will, I'm going to separate the numbers and the tens, okay? So I'm going to write it like this. I'm going to t extract the 4.1, the 2.4, and the 1.5, and I'll put them together. So I'm going to have 4.1 um, times 2.4 over 1.5, okay? And then for the tens, I'm going to use the law of exponents. I'm going to have 10 to the second. Since this is being multiplied by that, I'm going to add it to the 3. And since you're dividing by 7, you subtract, okay? So remember, laws of exponents, when you multiply, you add, when you divide, you subtract, okay? So that's the principle I use here. So basically, um, x to the a times x to the b. I'm going to use a different color so we don't get confused. I just want to show you the laws of exponents. We have x to the a times x to the b. You add the powers, x to the a plus b. Uh, and then if you have x to the a over x to the b, you subtract x to the a minus b. Okay, this is a product property of exponents. And this is a quotient property of exponents. That's what I did here. These ones have been multiplied, so you add, and this has been divided, so you subtract it, okay? So to do this left piece, I'm going to use my calculator to compute that. Uh, so it's going to be uh, 4.1 4 times 2.4 divided by 1.5, and you get 6.56, okay? So in this piece, you have 6, oh, let me use a different color. Uh, you have 6.56 times 2 plus 3 is 5, 5 minus 7 is 2, so it's 10 to, is negative 2, so it's 10 to the negative 2. And there you have your answer also, okay? So 6.56 times 10 to the negative 2 is the answer we, go, we got using both methods, all right? Now, uh, if you want to verify your answer, you can do this by using the scientific uh, function in your calculator. Let me show you how that works. So you just go to mode. And you have scientific and engineering. I'm going to scroll over to scientific, press enter, enter, okay? You see this double E right here above the uh, comma? That means um, times 10 to the whatever, okay? So um, let's. I'm going to enter the original problem. Please pay close attention to how uh, the, the way I'm entering it because uh, that's the key to getting the correct answer, right? So this is just checking. I'm just checking my work to ensure that I'm correct, all right? So I'm going to have... 4.1 times 10 times 10 square. I can write it as I can write it as times 10 square, or I can just simply go e to the. This means times 10 square. Okay, that's the shorthand way of doing it. Times 2.4 instead of times 10. 
I can just put e for times 10 to the third, okay? And then divide that whole thing by 1.5 times 10, I'll put e again to the seventh, all right? And look at your answer. So as we put it in our scientific notation, it gives us the answer in scientific notation, all right? So you have 6.5 e to the negative two, which is the same thing as 6.5 times 10 to the negative two, okay? So remember in your calculator, uh, calculator syntax, this piece right here is expressed as the double E, okay? So that's why uh, 6.56 E to the negative two is the same thing as this result we got earlier, all right? So there you have it. Okay, let's move on to question 32. It says express the product of X plus two over two and four X plus 20 over X squared plus six X plus eight. So let's go ahead and do it. So we have x plus 2 over 2 times 4x plus 20 over x squared plus 6x plus 8. All right, so let's factor anything that's factorable so I can count, uh, cancel out factors and have a, the product in simplest form. These two cannot be reduced. They're both primes. Uh, so let's focus on the uh, right, right uh, numerator. Okay, so the right numerator. Uh, 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 is uh, 4x plus 20. So we're going to break it down. Break down 4 is 2 times 2 times x. If you break down 20 is 2 times 2 times 5. Okay, using your factor tree. Now what can I factor out here? Uh, I can take out two twos and that yields 4x, I mean 4 times and left you, you're left with x plus 5. Okay? All right, so that's the factored form of the right numerator. So let's insert it back into the problem. X plus two over two times, instead of four X plus 20, we have four parentheses X plus five over. Now the, the right denominator, right denominator. We're gonna factor that also, okay? So this is a quadratic trinomial, so I have to use a, a factoring strategy, I'm going to use um, the X game, okay? I'm going to use the X game or the AC method to factor this. There are other methods that can be used, but this is pretty consistent. That's why I like using it. So AC uh, is, A is 1, right? Because that's the coefficient of X squared. So AC is 1 times 8, which is 8, and B is 6. What are two numbers that multiply to give you 8 and add to give you 6? Uh, we can use 4 times 2. So I'm going to put it back in. We have X squared. Uh, plus 4x plus 2x plus 8. I didn't change the problem, I just replaced the middle term with two numbers, the first that has a common factor with x squared and the second with a common factor with 8, okay? So let's break this down and factor by grouping. We have x times x plus 2 times 2 times x plus 2 times x plus 2 times 2 times 2, okay? All right, break it down the center and factor by grouping. So from the first two, I can take out x. So I can take out x from here and here. And that leaves me with x times x plus 4. So 2 times 2 is 4. And then on the right side, I can take out 2 and 2. So I'll have plus 2 times x plus 4. Okay, this factors into x plus 2 times x plus 4. All right, so that's the factored form of the right denominator. So let's reinsert it back, x plus 2 times x plus 4. Now let's see, can I reduce anything? Yeah, I can. x plus 2 divides, change the color, x plus 2 divides here once, and x plus 2 divides here once, 2 divides here once, 2 divides here twice. So your final answer is going to be 2 times x plus 5 over x plus, um, x plus 4, okay? Or you can write this as 2x plus 10 over x plus 4, all right? So there you have it. All right, let's move right along to question number 33. It says on the set of axes below, graph y equals 3 to the x, over the interval, negative one less than or equal to x, and x is less than or equal to two. All right, so let's make ourselves a, a table of values to generate 
um, our, our outputs given our specified input domain values there. So uh, we have x, let's put x on the left, and then y equals 3 to the x for a scratch, and then our final y output over there, all right? So let's start with a negative 1. If we plug in negative 1 here, y is going to be 3 to the negative 1, okay? Um, and that can be rewritten as 1 over 3, because if you have a negative uh, power, you have to reciprocate it, okay? All right, so this negative 1 goes makes this become 3 to the 1 over 3, all right? So our output here is 1 third. Now let's uh, move on to the next input value. Uh, our next input value is 0. So y is going to be 3 to the 0. And we know anything raised to the 0 is power is 1. So our output here is 1. We have two more values to uh, input into our function, namely 1 and 2. So let's try, let's do 1 first. So 1 is y equals 3 to the first power, which is just 3. So our output uh, in this case is 3. All right, uh, last but not the least is 2. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. Um, if I input 2 into my function, I'll have y equals 3 squared. 3 squared is 3 times 3, which is 9. So our output here is 9. Okay, so let's go ahead and graph it. Um, we're going from uh, x equals negative 1 all the way to 2. So let's see. We have, since my graph goes from negative 1 to 2, I can use three tick marks for my for a unit. So this is negative 1, that's 0. This is 1, three tick marks is 1, and then three tick marks is 2. All right, so negative 1 goes to a third. Uh, since I'm 1 as high as 9, I have to use each tick mark to be a unit. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. All right? Okay, so negative 1 goes to 1 third. 1 third is somewhere down here. To, down here. Let me use a different color. So negative 1. 1 third is down here for your output for negative 1. For 0, 0 goes to 1. And then for uh, 1, 1 goes to 3. 1, 2, 3. And then for 2, 2 goes to 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. All right? And then we just connect the dots. So it looks something like this, like a typical exponential function. Go there, go there, and it just curves up all the way to there, okay? The endpoints are closed circles because, um, or included in the graph because you have a line here and a line here. Uh, so there goes a graph of y equals 3 to the x on the closed interval negative 1 to 2. All right? So that's that. So thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video. Please feel free to subscribe to my channel by clicking up here. Uh, if you like this video, you can click like down here. And please, please, please post a comment to tell me what you think about this video. More videos can be found on mattgoodserve.com. Thanks again and have a wonderful day.